156. Five, six. Five seconds straight ahead, James. Four. Thank you, baby. Be sure to go. One fifty six. One five six. Right here, baby. Five seconds. One. One forty six. One four six. Right in here, baby. Five seconds. One. Thank you, love. Yeah, I didn't know it was supposed to be there. One forty six. What do you think about Khabib and, and what I said earlier about making sure that he puts himself in position where the weight is not going to be a question? Because I don't know if he weighed 54 for the last one, but it really didn't seem to be in question. And again, just standing next to him, I feel like he's made some decisions to make sure that this is something he has nipped in the bud. I'm not saying it's going to cost him necessarily in the first minute of the right. fight against Conor McGregor, but when I mentioned it to his guy, Daniel Cormier, you know, he didn't dismiss it as a factor. I just want to get your thoughts on on that particular observation I had a couple weeks ago there in, in Calgary. Well, it, it is certainly something different, right? So um, I, I think the last fight, he kind of came in a little bit lighter, too. He, he Yes. Uh, and I think it was a good decision. So, you know, if he gets too excited, I, I remember uh, in my fight against BJ Penn, um, I was training like an animal. I started way too early, and I peaked too early. I, I felt like crap, and, um, yeah, it, it was not a good situation. Um, so I, I think for Habib, you know, I don't think he's going to get rattled by Conor McGregor necessarily, but he is very motivated to smash Conor McGregor, and sometimes you can get a little yeah. too excited. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I think he's coming in leaner because he knows how important this fight is. He realizes that, yes, he has missed weight before. He does not want to be that guy again. Uh, so he's coming in lighter, um, and I think it suited him well in that last fight. I don't think it's going to be a case where he's cutting weight, he's coming in a little bit lighter, he cuts weight maybe a little bit earlier, uh, and now he's weakened by that. I, I don't think that's going to be the case with Habib Nurmagomedov. The Darren Till, um, Darren Till uh, Woodley fight, Kamara Usman is actually preparing. Did you see that? No. Yeah, Kamara Usman, apparently, Kamara Usman to be flown out to Dallas as a potential replacement for Darren Till. He's submitting medicals, so he's going to have full clearance. Uh, mm. And I guess, per, this is Brett Okamoto, ESPN. Per his management, Usman will in fact submit medical medicals and weigh in during fight week in the event something happens to either Till or Woodley uh, before UFC 228. Now, I'm assuming if something happens to, to Woodley, that would be Till versus Usman for an interim fight. And of course, unfortunately, if, if Till doesn't make weight, which of course he didn't last time, if Till doesn't make weight or Till has to withdraw due to injury, then Kamara Usman will, uh, will step in. And Usman tweeted, just a deep feeling in my soul. September 8th, I will be the new welterweight champion of the world. I think that's wishful thinking, buddy. You know, I think Woodley's proven time and time again he's not a pull-out merchant. And Darren Till missed weight last time. It'd be amazing for him to do that twice in a row, especially with a title fight on his hands. Yeah. I, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, good for uh, good for him. Um, it's nice that the, the UFC is having a little bit of foresight and has a plan in place if 
something does happen i think they should always have sort of like a uh, what do they call it in like theater they call it a uh, an understudy right <laughs> they should always have like somebody ready to go if you know, somebody gets injured because it does happen a lot. And we've seen, you know, fight cards really fall apart because of it. So, you know, someone was saying that recently. They should always have, uh, you know, as you said, an understudy, a, a replacement, an alternative just in case. And I'm not with that at all, you know, because A, if it's a title fight between two people that certainly deserve it, Title's and it's a number one contender. Yeah. Then that's different. And then also, yeah. as you know now, Lewis, getting ready for a mixed martial arts fight um, is incredibly hard. It's a lot of sacrifice. Are you saying that the person that's maybe, maybe a 1% chance that the other guys fall out or don't make way he gets to fight, do you think he's really going to push himself as hard as someone had, had that signed the contract for the fight? Well, what if it was like this, right? And this is literally just talking out of my ass. I have no emotional connection to this idea at all. And I, I have put no thought into this. So I'm sure you're going to torch this. But what about even just having guys that are paid to be in shape? Or maybe even like, like let's just say, because they do this usually, right? Let's say it's a 170-pound fighter on the undercard. And somebody gets injured. They say, all right, we'll give this guy the fight. He's already in shape. He's, you know, fighting. And then... Tip, I guess they, the other guy kind of gets screwed, right? So the other guy will get the bigger fight. But what if it's like almost in the contract that if this if somebody were to get injured, this is the dude that was going to step up. So there's always almost like a, a fail safe just in case it happens. It just happens a lot. Yeah, yeah no, for sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I guess guy, it's good for what the about UFC. A, what about a guy that is being paid to train and fight, right? Um, even if he doesn't have a fight, pay him a little if bit. If you still think there's a now let's remember the odds of them fighting are slim right if there's still a, a good chance that you're not going to fight they're not going to push themselves they're not going to make those sacrifices they're not going to do those extra rounds of sparring because they yeah. think more than likely i'm not going to get chose to fight and i'm just preparing for a little payday just on the off chance god i'd love to find out what deal mcgregor did with the ufc to come back because you like you know this stuff you're the biggest kid of all time and you know this one's gonna be huge yeah there's no way he's playing the same he, there's no way he's in the same lane as he was when he fought eddie alvarez <laughs> no the amount of money he's making on this one i'd dying to know and we, we it's been tough to find out because the they give us what the commit that also this is one of the reasons in vegas we'll get we'll find out what the commission tells us mm -hmm. but that, it'd be so interesting to see did they give him stock in the company what they do is it a flat fee because he's not fighting like you know a million win m million to show that ain't happening after 100 mil no he's gonna flat fee now yeah and i wonder what it is is it 20 million is it 30 million whatever the highest paid is and it's mcgregor you gotta pick, imagine triple that double that at least coming off the mayweather hype coming off the, as big as star he is now the state of where the UFC's at now, like you're looking at some major fucking buco dollars. And he deserves it. Look what he's doing. <sighs> he had for the UFC two oh five three million three point five million to show. And fifty thousand so yeah. so you got he got four mi well uh so th 3.5, so he made basically 4 million, including the Reebok sponsorship, right? Mm -hmm. Well, 3.6 million. Oh, I see. They include that. So he made, yeah, basically 3.6 million. God, $40,000 for Reebok sponsorship. Greatest deal ever for Reebok, ever. Think about it. And this isn't on knock anyone, but you for the price of Conor McGregor, you pay the same price for Eddie Alvarez and Woodley. Hmm. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah.